Here, we'll be analyzing the global and local behaviors of some functions using limits. We'll be looking at two things in particular. Number one, we'll be looking at the vertical asymptotes. We will check the one-sided limits of our vertical asymptotes to analyze whether our function is going off to infinity or to negative infinity. Number two, we'll be looking at the end behavior of our function, and to do that, we'll take a look at our horizontal asymptotes. And by the end, we should have a pretty good picture of what our function will look like without even having to graph it. So here we have y equals x squared plus 7x plus 6 all over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Well, in order to analyze what happens at our vertical asymptotes, it is first important to find where vertical asymptotes might happen. Now, let's factor both the top and the bottom because we will not have vertical asymptotes if one of our factors ends up canceling out. On the bottom we have x minus 1 and x minus 2. So it looks like both of our factors in the denominator do not cancel out. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1 and at x equals 2 because those are the x values that yield a 0 in our denominator without having that factor cancel out with anything on top. So let's take a look at what might happen at x equals 1. Now we can take the limit as x approaches the left hand side of 1 of f of x. Now remember our vertical asymptote analysis, we're going to pick a number 0.1 to the left of 1. How about 0.9? And all we're going to do is look for whether our function is positive or negative at that particular point. Because we know that at a vertical asymptote, our function is either going to go off to infinity or to negative infinity. So let's plug in 0.9. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. So from the left-hand side of 1, we seem to be going off to positive infinity. Let's check out the right-hand side of 1. How about 1.1? Positive, 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 negative. So we have a positive over a negative. That gives us negative infinity. So we know from the left-hand side of 1, our function is approaching infinity. And from the right-hand side of 1, our function is approaching negative infinity. Let's do the same analysis but for x equals 2. So here, let's do it in green. We have x equals 2. We will first take the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side of f of x. From the negative side, let's choose 1.9. Positive, 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 negative. So this is going off to negative infinity. Now let's see what happens when we take the limit as x approaches 2 from the positive side of f of x. Let's choose 2.1. Positive, 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 positive. This is going off to positive infinity. Now, we can look at the end behavior of our function by looking at our horizontal asymptotes. Now when we look for our horizontal asymptotes, what we're actually doing is taking the limit as x goes to both positive infinity as well as negative infinity. To check the end behavior of our function, all we have to do is take the limit as x goes to both positive and negative infinity of our function. Now as such, we have some grains of sand. 6 and 7x are a grain of sand compared to the magnitude of x squared blowing up next to it, as are negative 3x and 2. So we can cancel these out. And x squared over x squared reduces down to 1. And so, y equals 1 is our horizontal asymptote. Now it's at this point that we can create a full picture of what our function looks like. We know that we have vertical asymptotes 
at x equals one, at x equals two. To the left of one, we're going off to infinity. To the right of one, we're going down to negative infinity. To the left of two, we're going down to negative infinity. And to the right of two, we're going off to infinity. And at both negative infinity and positive infinity, we are approaching y equals one. So here's my vertical asymptote at one. Here's my vertical asymptote at two. And here's the horizontal asymptote at x equals one. To the left of x equals one, we're going off to infinity. So what's going on here is that we're going from one and we're going off to positive infinity at x equals one. And then we come down from negative infinity right here and we'll, we'll approach negative infinity again to the left of two. As we noted right here, yes, to the left of two, we are going down to negative infinity. And of course, to the right of two, we're going off to positive infinity. And of course, we approach y equals one as we go off to infinity in that direction. And this is a basic idea of what this particular function looks like. Now, these vertical asymptotes were created by seeing where my denominator is equal to zero. And of course, the horizontal asymptote was created by setting the limit as x goes to both positive and negative infinity. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have y equals three over x minus five. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals five. Now let's analyze this vertical asymptote by looking to both the left and the right of x equals five. The limit as x approaches five from the left hand side of three over x minus five, here we can use our vertical asymptote analysis by choosing a number 0.1 to the left of five. How about 4.9? On top, positive, on the bottom, negative. So this goes off to negative infinity. And let's take the limit as x approaches five from the positive side. Let's choose a number 0.1 to the right of five, like 5.1. Here's positive over positive, that gives us positive infinity. Furthermore, we can take a look at the horizontal asymptotes by taking the limit as x goes to positive and negative infinity of three over x minus five. Our denominator is getting extremely large. And when that happens, our fraction converges to zero. And so it's at this point that we can create a picture of what this looks like. So let's create our axes. We know that we have a vertical asymptote at one, two, three, four, five. So let's denote that by a dotted line right here. We know that to the left of five, we're going down to negative infinity. And to the right of five, we're going off to positive infinity. And we're approaching zero as we go off to both positive and negative infinity. And so this function looks like this. And that is the analysis of three over x minus five.